Hi there, welcome to Joe Goods Workbench and welcome back to my little series about fixing this beautiful early 80s pocket computer. In my last video I fixed the docking station that is needed to transfer programs and that can print stuff on paper using four tiny pens. Now I wanted to actually print something on my machine, but I had the problem that all of my pens had dried out. There are different projects where people tried to refill these pens or replace them with homemade ones. That person here describes his attempts nicely and after some trial and error he settled on 3D printed pens with gel pen tips. I also found an attempt on YouTube that included cutting down pens and epoxying pieces together, but that looked quite complicated. Oh, by the way, you can actually even still just buy compatible pens, but they are crazy pricey because they are for plotting units in medical diagnostics devices. My plan is simple and does not require 3D printing. I will replace the writing tip of the original pens with one of these. These are Stabilo.88 fine liners, which seem to be available basically everywhere for cheap. My method does have some disadvantages though, that you should know before trying it. For starters, you need the original pens. Also, the line of these fine liners is a bit wider and less even than the original, and so small printed fonts will be hard to read. And unlike ballpoint tips, the fine liner tips dry quite quickly and then need some movement to start writing again. On the plus side, my method is simple and doesn't require special equipment. And you end up with pens that are reliable, refillable and that produce great looking thick lines. This is what you need. A small saw, flat screwdrivers, box cutter, scissors and a lighter. And to reduce the mess, some cling film. These one-time use pipettes will come handy too and you need a small container of some sorts. Of the less common things, you need three different sizes of shrink tube. And of course you need one of the original pens. Oh, and a vise will come handy, but I guess pliers will do as well. Clamp the pen with the tip in the vise. Now use the two screwdrivers to carefully lever up the metal housing. For the case the colored plastic ring stays in the housing, you can clamp in a small nail and use it to pull out the ring. You don't need the tip anymore, but the ring is still needed. A small side note here, my steps include cleaning out the ink reservoir. Technically, that might not be needed, but I don't know how well the new ink mixes with the dried residue of the old ink. Now see whether you can take out the reservoir without hassle. In my case, the fibers came out, but the foil that surrounds them did not. The foil was stuck to the metal wall and I had to rinse it to soften the ink. Small tweezers help to grab the foil on the side and to get it out undamaged. Now clean and dry all pieces. The fibers look white-ish when they are clean. Put them carefully back into the foil tube. Put the reservoir back in the pan and put it aside. Next, cut off the back of the fine liner pan about a half inch away from the end. Pull out the end cap. Then slide out the ink reservoir and put it aside. Take a box cutter and cut away parts of the black plastic from the tip. After you freed up the little lip of the tip on one side, push it forward to get it free and pull it out carefully. Find shrink tube that is a snug fit in the hole of the plastic ring. Then cut the tube off so that a bit more than 2 mm stick out. 
Now take the fine liner tip and push it into the tube so that the wider area stretches the tube. Cut off the thin pipe behind the tip so that it reaches about half into the metal housing. Then push the ring back into the housing, but don't push it in all the way yet, you need to adjust it later. Take the pen reservoir and carefully squeeze some drops of ink into the container. Use the pipe to suck up the ink and push it into the metal pen. Then put back the tip. You can wrap the reservoir in cling film and melt close the ends for future refilling. Now you're almost done, but the tip is a bit thin and will rattle in the cage. Take a very thin piece of shrink tube, cut off 3mm and push it over the tip so that a bit of metal pokes out. That will ensure a better fit of the pen in the cage. Now you can try it out. When the writing looks like this, then the pen is too long. In that case, push the ring in a bit further. Now the writing should look fine. I did not have caps for these pens, and so I made some. For that, find a piece of shrink tube that goes over the pen and cut off 18 millimeters. Push it over the pen by 10 millimeters and shrink it. Heat up the edge once more and squeeze it with pliers. That gives you a handy cap for the pen that makes sure that it doesn't dry out. I made four pens using that method, and while they are not perfect, they work decently well. Now that I had them, I wanted to make use of them and write a little program that can print some cool stuff. But the basic language used on here has some interesting quirks that I did not expect. More about that in the next video, and also about how to transfer data from a modern computer onto this device. Until then, thanks for watching, please subscribe, and see you soon!